if anyone's got any questions as we're going along, if there's anything you want to know, you might even already have a horse and there might be something about it you're not sure about. Um, if you're looking at, at buying your first horse and you're not sure what to look for, if there's anything that you want me to specifically cover, please stick your hand up, sing out. Um, I'm more than happy to help. Um, we've got with us today our beautiful Blondie and her assistant Chloe. Um, <laughs> And we'll talk a little bit about Blondie's story. And for anyone who's followed Horsewise magazine, you will probably know a little bit about Blondie's story. Um, if you were going to buy your first horse, Blondie would not be the horse you would go and buy. Um, but <laughs> we'll see we'll talk about that later. Um, realistically, buying a horse, it is right up there, I think, with probably buying a house. Um, it is so fraught with danger, there's so many things that can go wrong. But you know what, when you get it right, it is the most amazing thing. You will have a friend for life, um, you'll have so much fun. So it is worth taking that time and making sure that you go and buy the right horse for you, okay? And that's the thing, it's buying the right horse for you. Don't let anybody else tell you what is right for you. Unless, of course, you've got someone very experienced who's helping you, and we'll talk about that. But you have to be happy with your horse, okay? Um, I've seen Chloe have a lot of different horses over the years, and I know she has a connection with this little mare like no other horse she's ever had, okay? Um, and, and Chloe has built up the connection with the mare, and it's amazing what these two do together. And it's the same for you guys. When you get an amazing horse, you'll have so much fun. Um, the first thing I always say to people when they're going and walking and buying their first horse, is get help, okay? It is not one of those things that buying your first horse you should do on your own. Okay? And by getting help, I mean getting get, get someone who's experienced. Find an experienced horse person. Now, be a little bit careful about the experienced horse person you choose. If you can find a fantastic instructor, like my friend Belinda over here, who has been around more years than she cared to admit to, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody like that and who teaches a lot of different people, those sorts of people are fantastic because they see a lot of horses, they see a lot of different people and quite often you will find that the horse, you, your perfect horse, you won't find it in a type, you'll probably find it via word of mouth. Um, we get asked all the time about you know, what horses we have for sale or what horses we know. And quite often the horses that, that we have for sale, they never see an ad. Okay, they're, they're just sold by privately by word of mouth. So take someone like that with you. And, and by taking someone like that with you, not only will it help you with knowledge, and you'll be talking to this person before you go. Before you go, you'll have established a lot of things. But when you get there, it takes all the emotion out of it. Now, all of you kids imagine, if I took all of you guys to go and buy a horse, and we came, and the first horse we saw was this pretty Palomino pony, you'd want it straight away, wouldn't you? Yeah? You'd walk in the paddock, you'd see this pretty Palomino horse, and you'd go, mm, I want that horse. But then what would happen if that horse was a mad, raging, lunatic, and a bucket to a good saddle on? would it? So that's where your instructor will come in, okay? Um, they will give you advice on, on what sort of horse you should be looking for. And, and the first thing I tell all of my clients to do when they, when people come to me and say I want to buy a horse, the first thing I tell them to do is to write a list. And to write a complete list of everything they want their new horse to be. And I don't care if on that list you put must like carrots, okay? I don't care if you put on that list, must be chestnut with four white socks. <laughs> um, I don't mind what you put on that list. Imagine, imagine you had an unlimited budget and you could create... Are you giving me that? Oh, God, thank you. Uh, you're staying, you're not going to <laughs> Um, but yeah, imagine every little bit that your perfect horse would be. You know, how high, you know, how, what colour, everything you want. You know what, you can change that list as you go along. But if you've got a list to start with, you know exactly what you're looking for, okay? Um, and you know, we all, 
we all change our mind. Okay? When, when I was a kid, all I ever wanted was a buckskin. Okay? I wanted a buckskin. You know, I'm lucky enough now, I've got two buckskins. Okay? One's mine. <laughs> and other people want them all the time now. But, you know, that's, so it's taken me 30 years to get the horse that is the colour I wanted. You know? So sometimes it takes a little bit of time. But write down your list. Know exactly everything you want and show that list to your instructor. Write down your green horse, everything about it, take it to your instructor and say, can you please help me find a horse like this? Now, the thing is, for a lot of you guys who are buying your first horse, I kind of hope that you are already getting lessons. And here in Canberra, you've got so many fantastic riding schools where you can go and ride. So you should have established a relationship with some fantastic horsey people already. Those people are going to be really important to you, okay? You, you can go to them for help when things go wrong. Okay? And they are the ones who should be able to help you buy a horse. So make sure you get everything ready before you go. The other thing you've really got to do is think about how much money you want to spend. Now, I know I've got some horsey mugs here and they will tell me the cheapest thing you will buy out of the whole horse experience is the horse itself. Okay? <laughs> because what happens, horsey mums, is they start out this big, like this one was when I first met her, and they grow to this big. And on the way, they want every new fashion, they want every blingy halter, they want the new dress-up saddle, the pink horse boots, every new, yes, and then eventually they want the 16-hand Holsteiner belt, no, what is it? A Frisian, 16 hand Frisian gelding, you know, that costs $80,000. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, that first horse, that, you Not know, happy. you could spend anything from $500 to $6,000 on your first horse. Believe me, that's as cheap as it's going to get. Okay? If anyone now wants to walk away and never think about buying a horse, go to your life, I would understand. I'm not allowed. There's a reason why my other half isn't home working today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, this is the thing. It, it, work out what it's going to cost you. Work out where you're going to keep the horse. Um, I had dealings with a lady in Sydney who has a, a horse business and she lives right on the edge of Sydney and there are a lot of people there who really, really want a horse. Anyway, she was dealing with some clients through her shop and these people went out and bought a very young horse and they live in Sydney. They bought this horse. She said to them, where are you going to keep it? They said, oh, in the backyard. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> you know, you've, you've got, to, got to tee up somewhere to have your horse. Okay? Here in Canberra, it's, it's fantastic. There's adjustment centres, there's so many different things. You know, make sure you're organised. Make sure you've got somewhere for your horse to go. Try and pick somewhere, I mean obviously you're going to pick somewhere that's close to you and convenient, but try and pick somewhere that you're going to you're gonna fit in, go and have a look. Um, I was teaching at Freshford last week and there was a lady having a tour around Freshford while I was there teaching. She was checking out the facilities, <laughs> she was checking out the facilities to see if they suited her. Okay? So that's what you can do, you can go and have a look. Okay. Most of the people who, who run the centres are really happy to help you out. So make sure it's got everything you need. Um, and, and make sure it's as safe as you can, uh, can be. I, um, I actually got the broodmare off this week to a place and lucky I really, really, really wanted to leave the broodmare there because I walked through the gate down to the stables and here's a pile of wire from me to the fence. Not in a horse paddy, thankfully. But if I was looking for a distance centre and I walked in and saw something like that, I would just walk out. Okay? If they can't clean up that sort of mess, you don't want to be there. And the other thing, when you're doing your budget, think about your financial budget and then think about your time budget. Now, for any of you kids who love playing other sports besides horse riding, sometimes it can get a little bit too much. Okay? Um, 
clothes is a classic example. She's actually had to give up some of her horse riding so she can do some of her other school stuff. Okay? And that's the decision sometimes that has to be made. I have a lot of family at home. Lovely family. Absolutely beautiful family. Really nice people. But unfortunately, they really thought their kids could do everything. <laughs> that, and they had a, a daughter. She was doing swimming, gymnastics, school, and horse riding. And they lived about 45 minutes from the school. So the kid had about an hour on the bus every day on top of that. Now, needless to say, what ended up happening was the horses got neglected and they had a beautiful pony about this size and he found it because nobody was looking after them. Okay, because the little girl just got wrapped up in too many things. Okay, so it's a time thing. Um, and, and we talk about this in, in the DVD when I was oh, younger than all of these guys. Um, I had a choice, and my mum who's standing over there will tell you this is true. <laughs> Look at this horse, mum. She's still coming with me all these years later. <laughs> okay? There's no escaping. Um, but, um, yeah, when I, was, when I was a little tacker, I had a choice. I could either get my first horse, or I could take up dancing, because my best friend, she danced. Um, so we went to the end of mine, we had a look at the dance. I'm like, yeah, I really like that, but you know what? I want to horse more. I had to choose. Okay? Um, and, and, well, for better or for worse, look at me. Um, maybe I should have gone dancing. <laughs> but yeah, but that's the choice. Um, I don't. <laughs> Would you have met him if you were dancing? Oh, no. <laughs> um, I, I actually met Warren at a horse sale. Although we have an argument about that. I say I met him at Cooper Horse Sales. He says I met him at Cooper Show. Doesn't matter, we wasn't dancing. <laughs> that was a long time ago. So, yeah. So that, and that's it. You know, I'm so lucky. Like, I can make jokes about, you know, where horses have got me. Um, or where they haven't got me. But the thing is, you know, I've got to travel the world. You know, I've got friends all over the country. I've got friends in every discipline. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, I've been really lucky. You know, I've met some amazing people, you know, like I wouldn't have known this one if it wasn't the horses. She wouldn't have got this pony if she didn't know me. Like it's that, isn't it? It's very good, doesn't it? So, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, and, and that's the thing, any of you who have kids who want to get into horses, or if you guys want to get into horses, or you want to get more into horses, do it as much as you are able. I really recommend it. What it will give you is a set of skills that you'll have with you for the rest of your life. And, and parents, you will understand this. It's about learning how to care for animals. It's about being respectful. Um, I just organised the bow race here earlier on today. If I had three kids come up to me and actually say thank you. But that's awesome. You know, I, I can't I can't be prouder of those kids for coming and saying thank you. You know, and that that's great. So yeah, I do. I joke about it, but I recommend if anyone wants to do it, do as much as they can. When you do go looking for your first pony. And, and pony a horse, it doesn't matter, I'll use the terms interchangeably. You really want to go and look for something that is really calm and quiet. Please, 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 never think you can go and buy a young horse or an inexperienced horse and put it with an inexperienced rider. It doesn't work. I have seen so many horror stories. Or, and I, I, like I've come across people who are now my clients who have gone and bought horses that were just so not suited to the bread. Okay, so go and get an experienced pony. A pony like this, now Chloe has started this pony herself. Chloe's an experienced horse person. You know, she's been around horses her whole life. She, and, and she started this pony herself. She's done all the work with her. She's taken her shows, inner schools, things like that. And the pony's not for sale. I have to tell everybody, and will never be for sale. No matter what, ever. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't talk to, to Chloe's father. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is the sort of pony you need to go and get. Something that has been around. And we've actually had a friend just recently who, just yeah, in the last couple of days, who's gone and bought a pony a bit like this. She's an older lady. She's an older lady. And she went and bought a pony that has been a kid's pony 
up until two days ago because she knew she needed something quite reliable that had been around and, and seen and done everything. Okay, so go and find ponies. The problem with ponies like this is, one, like I said, they sell quite often by word of mouth. You don't even know they're for sale. And two, if they are advertised, they tend to be pretty expensive. But then think about it. If you go and buy, and I, by the way, I never was good at maths at school, so I won't work it out for you. But if you go and spend $3,000 on a pony, and you have that pony for the next three years, and your child rides that pony every day or every second day, and your child is safe in that time. And then you sell it for $3,000 at the end. Exactly. You, you know, that doesn't work out as much per day. Try and go to the movies every day and see how much that costs. You know, try and keep up with the latest Xbox and PlayStation. I don't know what games are worth, but I can't imagine they're worth. I heard three grand. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Husband, the same part of the deal. Okay? You might have to spend a little bit more than you want. But if you buy a quality pony, one, you'll be able to spread that over a long time. And two, if at the end of it, you can bear to part with that pony, you're going, hopefully, to get your number. And it'll depend on age and injuries and a few other things, but you should be okay. So a pony like this is a really nice little pony. Now, we could stand here, Robert. We could stand here and pick her apart. Guess what? When you're buying your first pony, I don't really care if she's got a little bit of a bent leg or she hasn't got the prettiest head or she's had a bit of an injury on her shoulder, isn't it, hasn't um, You know, I can forgive all of that stuff if that pony is safe. And what you have to keep thinking is what price on mine or my child's safety? If you're buying the pony for you or for your child, like, what price can you put on not having to take that child to the hospital, okay? What price can you put on, you know, knowing that your child is safe out there in the arena and that pony's not going to hurt them? And for you too. I'm going to do a presentation this afternoon on confidence, getting back confidence. The reason why people like me have worked with people like getting their confidence back is nine to that they've got a ball of bad horse, haven't they? And, yeah, and then suddenly they get a buster, they get hurt, they lose their confidence. Okay, so keep, keep all of that in mind. If you can not go down that track, you're going to be so much further ahead. Um, and, and don't, don't, by the way, I don't want anybody to think if it's for your child or for you and you've never had one, I don't want you to think you're not going to fall off. We actually lost count. I was a terrible rider as a child. Could not sit on this fence. I lost count of how many times I broke my arm as a child. Because I just fall off and put my arm out every time. Yeah, but guess what? I keep getting back on. You know? So. I'm just I'm a really, really, really bad rider. Um, have you proved that? Huh? But you know what? It does happen. They're going to fall off. We're all going to fall off. You know, it, it can happen to the best of us. So don't, don't think it's not going to happen, but just try and be ready and try and have a good horse so that there's less chance of it happening. Um, and, you know, look at the demeanour of this man. This is something really important you've got to look at. When you go to look at a horse, See how this mare is really calm and relaxed? She's, she's got her head low. She's got a really nice, calm eye. So this is the sort of thing I'd like to see. I'd like to see a horse or a pony really relaxed. And I'm moving around and moving my hands. See how she doesn't care? She's not reacting to anything. <clears throat> um, and the big thing is, when you see a horse that's stressed out or worried or going to panic about something, See how this mare's withers here and her pole's here. See how her pole is no higher than her wither? She's calm. Whenever a horse's pole is lower than its wither, they're in a relaxed state. That means that if I, and I won't, but if I went at this mare and went, rah, what's the first thing she's gonna do? Exactly, her head's gonna come up. Like, horses, horses, uh, uh, animals who've evolved over thousands of years by running away from things that are going to eat them. And that's something to always remember, okay? <clears throat> they have a really strong flight response. So a man like this that's nice and calm and relaxed, you know, that's the sort of horse you'd be looking for in your first pony. You know, like, Chloe, you're on opposite sides now. The mare doesn't care. You know, yeah, that's right. That's, 
this is the sort of demeaning you've got to watch. Obviously, you want to also get on and ride the horse. Um, but, you know, and even then, you want it to remain calm, okay? There's a few red flags where if you go to buy a horse, um, you should walk away. If the buyer is a little bit defensive or rude, okay? We all have our bad days, okay? I have plenty. Um, but at no stage should you feel in sorry, but the seller. At no stage should you feel intimidated by the seller. Okay? The seller should be obliging and helpful. Okay? If the seller starts to make a lot of excuses, oh, they've never done that before. Oh, I don't know why it's, why she's like that today. Oh, she must be in season. Um, if they start to make a lot of excuses, alarm bells should be going off. Okay, you should start to think, oh, what, what, why, why is this horse behaving differently? Okay, um, and you know, if if you turn up and, and if you turn up and in any way the horse is neglected, um, that is a really good sign to walk away. Um, I've had several clients who've gone and bought horses without my help. Happy to report. They have gone and bought horses, and the horses have been like starving poor, okay? Like ribs, bones, nothing else. They've gone and bought these horses. Oh, they're so quiet. Oh, Joe is so beautiful and calm. He never, nothing phases him. So what do they do? Be a responsible horse owner. They start to feed their horse up. Guess what Joey does as soon as he's got some food? That's right. Suddenly we discover Joey, Joey's a, a fire-breathing dragon who, you know, is scared of dogs, cats, humans and bikes. You know, the, 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 like, so if you go to look at a horse and it's really, really poor or, you know, really mistreated, go away, leave the horse there, bring nourish the person. You are not, you guys are not here to save every neglected horse in the world. Um, you know, and look, I think that those of you know, I have to clarify, this little mare was one of those neglected horses, okay? Um, but we knew that when we went. I got a little grey pony, Comet, who some of you, if you've ever seen my stuff for horse wise, you'll see Comet. Um, and Chloe got blonde. But they also weren't broken. That's it. They weren't broken in, they weren't handled. They weren't anything. So you know, like there is times when you can, you can, when you're an experienced horse person, by all means, go and find a horse and rescue it. Okay, but please don't go when it's your first horse. Okay, um, go and buy an experienced horse. You know, and um, and that's the other thing. Something I was talking about saying, like you know, taking help with you. Be careful about the help you take with you. Do not take the local horse collector. We all know somebody who's a horse collector. Do not take the local horse collector with you when you go to buy yourself a horse. Because you will end up with the horse because they wish they could buy it. Okay? So, and, and you know, just, just be a little bit aware of that. You, you are buying the horse for you. Like I said, not for anybody else. So make sure the horse is for you. Um, I have some people that I would never, ever, ever take to look at a horse because I just know they would influence my decision too much. And, and that's the thing, you know, you're probably going to look at a heap of horses before you find the one you want to keep. Um, I often tell the story, my best horse I ever had, who's in retirement now, 19 years of age and eating grass, doing nothing. And he, he took me 18 months to find him. But the other funny thing about that horse is and I didn't know it at the time, but the people I bought him off actually had bets on how long it would be before that horse would kill me. He was not satisfactory as a first horse, but he wasn't the first horse for me. But it took me 18 months to find him. When I found him, the day I rode him, I had a gut feeling that horse was exactly what I wanted. And all of you girls out there, you know, women's intuition, it will serve you well. Okay, you will go and look at a horse and you will go, as soon as you walk in the pen, you will go, that horse is not right for me. Okay, trust your gut instincts. Okay, um, and I said this horse, he was, he was bad. He did go on his head up in the air. He was poor and, and, and he was just a mess. But I knew that horse was special. 
And he really was special. Okay, so all of us girls, and boys too, what does this? Boys too. You don't trust your gut instincts. You go and look at a horse, and you walk in, and straight away you're like, just because you're walking around that you like it, like I said to the kids before, you all like this pretty Palomino pony. Just because you walk in that's a pretty Palomino pony doesn't mean you have to buy it straight away. But if you walk in and you've got a gut instinct that says that me is kind of what I want, then you're getting there. Then work it, and if your gut instinct still says, I really like her, then you can go somewhere. Um, and on going to look at the horses, whatever you do, if you own your own float, or if you've arranged with a friend to pick up the horse, don't take the float on the first trip. It is the biggest way you will end up bringing home a horse you never ever wanted, okay? Go and look at the horse without the float. You can always go back. I don't care if you have to drive 10 hours, okay? I'm a, and I'm a, I'm a dead set believer in this. And, and look, I would, if I found a horse I really wanted, but I was, if I was going for a client, I would go and leave the float at home, okay? You are better off to have two 10-hour trips than to have one 10-hour trip and six weeks later have a broken leg because the horse has chucked you off. Yeah, like, be a, like use common sense. Like, think to yourself, oh, am I gonna get there and fall in love with the first horse I see? I've done it, I've done it. You know, we all do it. <laughs> so, you know, you've just got to be a little bit prepared for what might happen. And if you have to travel a really, really long way, what I recommend is, um, actually travel and stay, so you can ride the horse two different days to get a motel. Like I said, remember, the cheapest thing you'll ever do is buy the horse, okay? It's everything else from then on that's going to cost you the rest of your living income. Um, so go, go and stay in a motel. What's $120 for a motel? I don't know, you guys might like flash away. But what's $120 for a motel if you're spending, say, $5,000 on a horse? Okay? Um, so, and stay at home. Go and ride it one day. You can go home, stay in the motel, kick back, think, bring some friends. You know, maybe put these days with Facebook and whatever, you've got video footage, you can send it to your friends. And go back the next day and ride the horse again. Okay? Um, if you don't like the horse on the first day, you can go home. Okay? Nothing lost. Or else you can stay the night and have a nice dinner and have a leisurely trip home on the next day. Nothing is lost. Okay? It's a bit like everything with horse training. You know the, the old saying, if you go to do a job, like it's going to take you five minutes, it'll end up taking all day. But if you go thinking it's going to take all day, it'll take five minutes. Treat horse dying like that. Okay? Have all the time in the world. You know, there is so many horses out there. There's so many good horses out there. Um, I will tell my clients all the time, there are so many good horses out there, it is not worth wasting your time on a bad one. Okay? Um, and so you just have to be ready for that. And, and you know, I have people come and say, should I buy from a dealer, should I buy a private? And you know what, all that is up to you. You will, you will find what suits you. Some dealers are very reputable. We had a business, for, our business for a while was retraining and selling horses. Um, we never did the wrong thing by anyone. I hope no one's going to argue about that. Um, but, you know, then there is people out there who, we all know do the wrong thing, but there's people out there who sell one horse to do the wrong thing. I had a friend ring me the other day. She'd sold a horse. It had been gone seven weeks. It fucked the lady off. She said, what do I do? In the end, she, and because she's a, she's a really honest person, she took the horse back. She's probably within her rights of being that amount of time to not take it back. Um, but she did the right thing. And that's the thing too, when you go and get a horse and find a horse you really like, ask for a trial. Do not be offended when the owner says no. Because if you come by a horse off me, I will say no. I will not let them off the farm. That said, you are welcome, and we'll pass, and I'm sure with a lot of other people out there, you can come and ride the horse at my place as many times as you like. That doesn't worry me at all. But I just will not let that horse out of my care. I actually got stung once before doing that stuff. And you'll find a lot of people who say no to trials actually have been stung. Um, so, you know, it's just something to... But it doesn't hurt to ask. A lot of people will say yes. Um, you know, so, has anybody got any questions? Mm -hmm. That either means I've done a really good job and covered everything, or I've talked way too fast and you didn't understand anything I said. So, 
So, yeah. But yeah. But anyway, guys, um, and the, other thing I, the other thing I have to plug is the High Country Horse Companies. We are Cherry Tree Equal is part of the High Country Horse Companies. They've got a stand down there in those white tents. If you want to, um, I have to go back over there now. If you want to come and talk to me privately, that's where I'll be. Um, they, but there's all the guys over there, you can do everything. If you want to come up to the, our beautiful snowy mountains, because I'm from Puma, um, and if you want to come to our beautiful snowy mountains and enjoy what we get to ride in every day, there's a range of businesses that have all gotten together to promote what we do. You can do everything, like coming and do clinics with me or lessons with me, through to going trail riding for a day or a few hours, right through going trail riding for a week. So um, I'll be over there. If anyone wants to come and talk to me, I'll be happy to answer any more questions you want. Uh, no, no questions from you lot. <laughs> They're my friends, sorry guys. <laughs> Is that right? Are you ready to give me a saddle, Steve? Just a saddle.